So we are waking up this morning, of course, to the news that that letter has been sent to Brussels requesting uh, an extension. What's your reaction? Look well, very prime ministerial, but uh, I think given uh, the behaviour of Remainers in Parliament, including the Speaker, um, I think Boris Johnson has a right to be pretty angry. Uh, and the country is pretty angry. I mean, just look at yesterday. It was built up to be Super Saturday, and it turned into an absolute flop. And what we've really seen now is over three years of the establishment trying to stop Brexit, and that's why the public are so upset with their politicians and beyond Brexit are going to want real political reform. So where I'm a little bit confused uh, is you're talking about that people will be upset at the idea that it's, you know, the can's being kicked, that the delay is happening. Yeah. But earlier this week you said, would I rather accept a new European treaty that's frankly very bad for us or would I prefer to have an extension and a general election? I would always go for the latter option. So are you really saying you prefer to... Extend Article 50, well, delay Brexit. I mean, you were like a secret no, 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 no. remain sleeper agent. What's going on? No, no. I want to leave on the 31st of October with a clean break Brexit. That's the only Brexit worth having because the one that Boris Johnson is putting to the House of Commons or tried to put yesterday and bounce them into before anybody had actually seen the content, it's a new e you treaty. It binds us and it doesn't get Brexit done because all it does is take us on to the next stage of negotiations and Michel Barnier has outlined all of his red lines. It's all there in the political declaration and we're going to be headed into another three years of agony. So I want to leave on the 31st of October but you know I'll warn everybody if this treaty goes through nothing would have changed at all. And I think far better to have a short delay and a general election where we might solve this because we've got a leave country. That hasn't changed one little bit. And a Remain parliament and a general election could just sort this out. How can you say that nothing would have changed? If this deal goes through, it would take us out of the customs union, it would take us out of the free, out of the single market, it would give us control over free movement of people, it would allow us to strike our own trade deals. I mean, it may not be the Brexit that you want, but it is a form of Brexit, come on. Well, on the 1st of November, if we were to leave, we wake up and we're still in the single market and we're still inside the customs union and we're still paying money to the EU. And we're still... Only because of the transition. Right, and, and, and the transition, OK lasts up until the end of 2022. It's a very, very long way away. Any thought... It's the end of 2020, isn't it, Mr well, Farage? And we have to give notice of extension by the 1st of July. The chances of us sorting this out in the next six months are just about zero. And as I say, you, you know, even... Even uh, when you hear the Prime Minister saying we take back our fisheries, read the small print. You know, have a look at what is being demanded by Monsieur Barnier in terms of the level playing field. Basically, he's saying that in terms of employment legislation, social protection, environmental law and even taxation, we are going to have to be on a level playing field with the rest of Europe, which means we're not taking back control of our laws. This is not Brexit. And all the dilemmas that we faced in the last few months, we'll be back with them in May and June next year. A clean break is the only way we're going to get a proper Brexit. just want to kind of re-emphasise that the end of the transition is at the end of next year. You've already said that you don't actually really mind an extension if it means Brexit no, 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 no. happening. I want a general election, so an extension for a few weeks into which we can have a general election is a much better outcome than signing up to a treaty uh, that becomes part of international law that binds us in foreign policy and in many, many other areas. This is a rotten deal. If Boris Johnson had presented this six months ago to the House of Commons, the ERG, every man and woman, would have voted against it. I do understand, because of Brexit fatigue and anger in the country, the temptation to vote for it, but it is nothing more than Brexit in name only. It will not solve anything. This will not end things. In fact, in many ways, as far as Brussels are concerned, we've just finished the easy bit. I just wonder if um, you will acknowledge that potentially public opinion appears to be shifting slightly. There was a Yuga poll out this week, for example, which found that two thirds of people who voted to leave in the referendum now want the deal passed, <coughs> compared to 10 percent who say that MP should vote against it. So are you on the losing side here? Well, actually, if you look overnight, you'll find YouGov polls showing nearly 50% of people have no idea what is actually in. And let's not call it a deal, let's call it a treaty, because that's what it is. And I spoke to a lot of MPs 
on Friday and Saturday, and because they'd been bounced into this, they didn't know what was actually in these documents. I urge everybody, uh, particularly those in the ERG and Eurosceptics and the Labour Party, spend today reading and understanding the extent to which these documents bind us in for the next few years, and you'll realise this is not Brexit, and the agony will continue. Last time we uh, spoke a, uh, a few weeks ago, Ms Farage, you said that you would consider a pact with the Conservative Party at, at the next election. Now that you've seen the details of the deal that Boris Johnson has negotiated, would you still be open to that kind of deal? Well, the point about a general election is it would give the Prime Minister the chance to press the reset button, the chance to say, actually, you know, Mrs May tried with this treaty. I've amended 5% of it. I've got some important changes on the customs union, uh, but we still haven't got a package that works. And if, if Boris Johnson went to the country having pressed the reset button and said, look, it is either a simple free trade agreement or we're leaving with a clean break Brexit, I think then the prospect of building a Brexit alliance to fight the election is there. And do you know something? That would win a very big majority in the next election. And then we could get a Brexit rather like the one we voted for. I'm afraid going down this route, it isn't going to happen. Do you think the Brexit party could prevent a Conservative majority then if you don't have an agreement? It's difficult to say. You know, I remember back in 2015, people saying to me as leader of UKIP, well, of course, the effect of UKIP in the election is that you'll damage the Conservatives and help Labour. And actually, we hurt the Labour Party far more than the Conservatives. It is difficult to estimate. As I say, I just hope we get the chance to have a general election. And I want MPs, please study the detail of this. Realise it doesn't make us a free country. What would be a good night for the Brexit Party at a general election? Oh, who's to say? Who's to say? Well, you uh, are. You're the leader. Come you, on. You know, you know, well, it, it's a brand new party. We've never fought a general election before. Uh, we fought a European election uh, and we managed to get the whole debate on the EU reset. Uh, you know, if Boris did get this through, the public may well say, hey, that's great. Uh, we've got this over the line. But once they realise it's actually just Mrs May's deal with a few improvements, uh, uh, they're going to be very, very angry. I don't see any prospect of us getting up before 2023 under these arrangements, and that frankly isn't good enough. The Brexit Party might not have fought many elections before, but you've fought a few in your time. Where are you planning on standing as an MP this time? I haven't decided. I ge genuinely haven't decided. I genuinely haven't decided. What's the long list? Uh, well, there isn't even a short list or a long list. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. What I do want to do is to try and educate people. Please, don't just take Boris's word for it that it's a great new deal. It isn't great. Very little of it's new. And it's not a deal. It's a binding international treaty. I haven't spent 25 years campaigning for us to become an independent country to swap one EU treaty for another EU treaty. OK, Nigel Farage, thank you very much thank for you. being on the programme.